thank you, Chen Kai. Well, uh, um, I will introduce Chen Kai's uh, uh, experiment of the catching ball process. Um, firstly, um, I'm going to uh, talk about the camera system. We use the optic track of flight 13, and the numbers, uh, as you can see, we use the six cameras. And the tracking of, uh, tracking areas uh, is over the blackboard. The, uh, the diameter is around 2 meters, and the height is around 1.8 meters. The software we're going to use uh, is uh, mainly about uh, the Motive and the uh, PY Charm. The Motive uh, is the official software to track the uh, to track the position of the objective in real time, and uh, um, we can also set the origin uh, coordinates. And we use the, the PY Charm to write our Python code, and uh, we can use it to uh, to read the real time position from the Motive. And you can do also. Uh, we can also do some calculations like the trajectory prediction and the input voltage uh, of the motors and the data tran uh, transmission and coding and so on. Uh, talk about. Uh, we talk about the prototype of the ball. Uh, what kind of ball we are used to throw? Um, firstly, we come. Uh, we think of consider the single marker. But actually, it turned out it didn't work because it's too. Um, because the software, the, the camera can only track um, a rigid body with at least three markers, so uh, that didn't work. So we uh, come up with the next uh, three uh, prototype. But finally, we decided to use the plastic uh, lid with three markers because uh, compared to uh, this one, uh, it's, uh, it's much lighter. And um, um, when, the, when, when the lid um, hit the ground, it won't cause this damage to our marker. It's too heavy. And uh, uh, compared to the real ball, the uh, ping pong ball with three markers, the uh, plastic lead um, have uh, it has less air friction and uh, less rotation. We don't have rotation because when uh, the ball is rotating, the center of the marker uh, is always changing. It's not uh, accurate. Uh, the net. Well, uh, if we want to catch the ball, we have to uh, attach a net with the with the uh, robotic arm, the uh, the end effect. So, uh, firstly, we use the net with the, the iron net, but actually, uh, it didn't work very well because. When the ball hit the net, it will be bounced away. So um, we uh, we just switched the, the iron net to the softer one, and uh, it worked very well. The new uh, workspace because uh, we put a, a, a net with the end effect, so the workspace uh, is changed. Actually, uh, you can, as you can see, it's uh, it's enlarged. Um, the block diagram of the whole process um, start uh, in the beginning. We threw the ball to the robotic arm. And the ball, uh, the, the system will firstly uh, collect the 10 positions of the trajectory. And then we will decide whether the ball will uh, cross the space, workspace of the robotic arm. If the answer is no, the computer will beep, uh, it will make a sound, and the robotic arm doesn't, work, uh, doesn't move at all. If the answer is, uh, is yes, then the uh, computer will uh, decide the capture point for the robotic arm to catch, to reach. And it will apply the inverse kinematics to, um, to determine the, the actual uh, duty cycles for, the mo for different motors to, um, to, to active. Then uh, the data will be sent to, uh, to the Arduino on the robotic arm via the serial port. The finally, the robotic arm will successfully reach to the position to catch the ball. And uh, this diagram shows uh, what is the happening during the during, uh, when we throw the ball. The uh, the height of the original uh, throwing uh, throwing height is around 1.8 meter, which means uh, it will take 0.6 seconds for the ball to touch to touch the ground. And the first uh, uh, first zero point seconds is to track the time positions and send send it to the computer. The computer will um, spend 0.02 seconds to do the calculation. Uh, that trajectory prediction, data encoding, uh, transmission, uh, it's pretty fast. We can ignore it. And the next uh, 0.4 to 0.5 seconds for the arm to reach to the actual position. Um, uh, it is uh, it's, uh, approximate and not accurate because it's up to the uh, distance. Uh, if the if distance is long, um, it will be my pretty large, like 0.5 or even larger. And we decide to uh, use this point which is uh, close to the boundary as our capture point uh, rather than the, the, the point near the ground because um, um, when the ball first here is pretty fast and the time gap between two points are actually 
um, point zero two, uh, we can consider there are the uh, the two points happen in the same time, and uh, the ground point we don't like it. We don't like it because we are, um, we don't like the 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 end effect or the net to touch the to touch the ground, which uh, looks very um, low. <laughs> I mean, uh, what what cause of damage to our what gun? Well, uh, the, um, we tried uh, 50 tries for each project, uh, projectile style. Uh, we have the horizontal and the oblique going. Uh, this is our video. Uh, because the video uh, is about 3.5 minutes, so we're not going to go through the whole video. For the horizontal throw, unreachable, mm -hmm. the system will beep, that beep, unsuccessful, we fit our fail and we succeed. Two percent. Um, they're pretty much the, um, they're pretty close. And finally, we draw the would I would like to draw the conclusion and uh, um, give you uh, the improved plan for the future work. Uh, first of all, we have successfully built the three degree freedom of the robotic arm. Uh, we use the the forward kinematics and the inverse kinematics. Secondly, um, the ro a robot can reach to a designated point with the error of about one centimeter, which is uh, pretty good, I think. And if, uh, we want to improve the accuracy in the future. We can design a feedback system for the position of the robotic arm. Uh, that is, we use um, the camera system to track the end effect, to track the net. Um, then we close the loop for our feedback. Um, we, do, we design the PI controller to cancel the error, finally. Now, um, we think the, 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 uh, the most um, error comes from the uh, tra uh, trajectory prediction. And it's, uh, it's about 4.5 centimeters, which is not good enough. We can improve it. We do, um, in the future, we're going to apply the common filter. The filter is um, uh, basically the, the, uh, the, the biggest uh, fi feature for the filter is that you can, you can track the estimated state of the system, and which means and uh, the estimate is updated. So uh, with the time goes, the uh, estimate of the prediction, the capture point is more and more accurate. So um, this is how it works for, how it works, and this diagram. Well, um, the, uh, as you can see, the overall success rate is around 75%. Um, I believe if we, uh, you, uh, if we use the common filter, uh, as mentioned before, we can um, uh, tremendously improve the uh, success rate. And besides that, there's also a very important factor which cannot be ignored: uh, is the um, robotic arm reaction time. That is, um, the time is around 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, 0 0.5 seconds. Um, so this time is pretty large compared to the 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 ball uh, total flying time. So also like 0 0.6 seconds. So if we, if we make it fast enough, um, some cases can be um, cancelled. Um, how do we do it? We can change to uh, ch change models to a, a better one uh, with a fast with faster reaction and uh, faster moving time, uh, faster moving speed, and we can also um, change the basket. I mean the net to uh, from iron to a lighter one, the basket, not the net. Um, uh, uh, use this way, we can improve the moving speed. So um, that's, that is all our work. 
Thanks for your time. Do you have any questions? Okay.